Hello and welcome back. This is video number four and we're going to talk about an overview of the smart one time offer and why they convert. So at this point in time, you will understand why the traditional way of creating a one time offer is not converting. So now it's time to show you how to set up smart one time offers or one time offers that do convert. Now here, what we want to do is start brainstorming how you can implement the strategy into your own sales funnel to ensure that you know you give your customers what they want so here's the part where you actually put yourselves in their shoes but this process is going to make your life a lot easier i wish i knew this uh, when i was setting up one-time offers back in the day and then i when i figured this out i was like wow i was actually doing it the hard way so referring back to the example in the previous video taxes the way a smart one-time offer works is to ensure that it is actually related to your original offer. Now you might be thinking, well, that's a no brainer. You know, I do that all the time or that should be easy, but really let's, let's just take this as an example. So to recap, if the front end offer is how to save money on taxes and we, we established previously that it was business taxes. So how to save money on business taxes. And if the one time offer was, let's say a review, a manual review by a CPA of your taxes and what you could potentially be leaving on the table, then yes, they are more likely to say, yes, I want that because with the front end offer, they bought that because they know that they may be losing money on the table and they're not saving money. So they bought the course on how to save money on taxes. So having a, a review of that would be good, right? That would be related. Now, a lot of times, how do you get to that point? Well, there are many different directions or angles and different types of one-time offers that you can create. So what I want to do is just give you some examples. We're not going to focus too much on this, but I'm going to give you some examples so that way you can kind of begin to brainstorm what you might want to do. Now, if people are buying the initial offer, the question is, will they pay more to have it done for them or would they rather do it themselves? So a lot of times you'll find people, they'll buy your course or they'll buy your digital product or you'll, they'll buy your service, but they're either on one side or one end. They'll either want to do it themselves or they want it done for you. It's really hard to know. So a lot of times if you can offer a mixture of those in your funnel, you'll actually get higher conversions especially if you know that the person buying it has a limited amount of time and at the end of the day, they would rather you do it for them. So knowing this answer to this question can really help you create one-time offers that actually sell like hotcakes. Now, while we could talk about different angles all day, you know, like I said earlier, let's get back to the smart one-time offer. So how do you ensure that people who go through your lead magnet buy your front end offer and then buy the majority of your one-time offers. This is simple. What we need to do is we need to work backwards. And while I know this doesn't really make a lot of sense right now, it will. So like I said earlier, keep an open mind. Do not assume anything. Do not assume or bring in any type of preconceived notions. Just kick that out right now. So I'm going to show you literally how to hack your funnel conversions by working backwards. So what we need to do is we need to start with your biggest, best one time offer, meaning what you love only your best buyers to buy out of a thousand buyers. You might only have like 400 buyers buy everything, or you might only have 200 buyers buy everything, but I want you to think it closely. What do you want those 200 or those premium buyers to buy, right? So what is your biggest, baddest, best one-time offer? So I want you to start with that first, or you could say, what is the most expensive one-time offer? The one all the way at the very end, start with that first, whether it's one-time offer three, four, or even five, you want to start there. So first off, think how many one-time offers do you need? to solve the problem that the person has and then start right there. 
So what is the ultimate solution essentially? It could be more expensive, it could be the solution or whatever. Write that down right now. Pause this video and write that down, all right? So hopefully by now you have written that down and I want to give you some examples here. So maybe if you haven't written that down yet, that's totally fine. If hopefully by giving you examples, it will help you uh, kind of get an idea there. So let's say for example that you are a tax professional and you want to offer consulting for a high end fee. So you could jot that down. You could also, uh, Think about doing it for them. Like I said, done for you services, whatever that looks like. So it could be DIY, it could be done for you services, whatever could be the biggest, baddest, last one time offer. So let's say, for example, that we have four one time offers and we'll start with one time offer number four. So what we need to do is we need to figure out Okay, so one time offer for in this case is the person offering consulting a high end fee. So what we need to do is from there, you need to move one step back to one time offer number three. So basically one step backwards and think, all right, if someone cannot afford one time offer number four, what is the next best thing? In other words, what we like to do is we like to take a piece of that and move backwards. So what is the next best thing? Perhaps group consulting. So maybe group consulting could be the one-time offer number three and one-time offer number four, maybe that's one-on-one -on -one personal consulting. So number four is one-on-one, -on -one. number three is group consulting, and then move backwards. What, what could be one-time offer number two? Well, let's take a piece of that and move backwards. But you see, by taking a piece and piece and piece and move backwards, what you're doing is you're creating a related, congruent one-time offer or funnel. So what's the next, next best thing if people cannot afford group consulting? Well, maybe you take audio recordings from the group consulting. You know, obviously nothing is better than live group consulting, but having those audio recordings is just as good. So maybe that will be one-time offer number two. Then we, we take a step back to one-time offer number one, and we can take a piece of audio recording and perhaps turn it into a book. So they're still getting a piece of that group and consulting or that personal consulting, but it's actually not consulting anymore. It's just a book or a course kind of thing. You get the point? You're basically taking a piece, moving back, taking a piece, moving back, taking a piece, moving back. And then you can even move that into your front end offer as well. And you can do the same with your lead magnet. So if you do that, guess what? Whoever consumes your lead magnet, you're going to attract a very specific person. They're going to definitely want the front end offer because it's a larger piece, you know, of the lead magnet. And the one-time offer is a larger piece than the front-end offer. Then the one-time offer number two is a larger piece than number one one-time offer. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, don't worry. We'll map it out visually so that you can see it in the next video. So like I said, it'll make more sense in video number five. But, you know, that should kind of get your mind going a little bit. So that's it. Let's move on to video number five and let me map it out so you can visually see it so that it can really stick in your minds. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.